Out of all the players that you've coached in the past, who does David Austin remind you of the most? Well, he's faster than most. You know, most small guys, most small guys are quicker than fast. And what you have to worry about him more is like them as slot receivers, them making, you know, having that wiggle and not being able, not being able to tackle him. But now you're the guy. Not only is he quick, but he is just blazing fast too. You know, so it's a he's a very unusual combination. And then probably the scariest thing that you see, and you know, this is not coach speak. You're sitting and you're watching the tape at Oklahoma game. And Oklahoma, I have a lot of respect for on defense, and he made them look silly. I mean, and if he can make Oklahoma's look, uh, defense look silly running the ball, that is that is a scary proposition. So he runs with toughness. He runs with power. He doesn't. Play. He doesn't. So somebody forgot to tell him he weighs 170. Okay, because that's not the way he plays. But he is fast and he is quick, and he's a really good player. And he's tough. It would be tough to give me for me to give you an analogy of him as a player because he's usually they'll say quicker than fast. But that's not the case here. He's quick and he's fast. Geno still has great numbers, but at the beginning of the year they were freaky great, like all the time great. Did defenses figure something out? Well, I think that you know, anytime you know, anytime you have that type of production, you go all the way back to the Baylor game early in the year where it was, you know, sixty to fifty-three. You know that that game right there where he threw like eight touchdown passes and you know had those type of numbers. I mean, he can he can sling it against everyone. You know, he's an average, they're averaging 345 past the game. So it isn't like they, people have come in and just shut them down. But the thing is, the running game has become so much more so much more part of their offense. He doesn't have to win the game by himself. In the past, I think it's been more dependent on him winning the game by throwing the ball. And I don't think that, you know, I think this year their offense has been more complimentary where they, they, they can, now, they can run, now run it more efficiently. Sometimes quarterbacks who play in that leech offense get the reputation for being the system quarterbacks. Do you, do you look at him and see NFL skill set? Well, I mean, everyone's a system quarterback. You know, that's probably one of the biggest misnomers of all time. I mean, you play within the system that you're in, and then when you go to a new system, you go to the new system. All they know is with what they do, he's really good at it. Can he throw the ball down the field? You betcha. Can he throw it accurately? You know, can he throw it short? You do that too. So I mean, when anyone can make all the throws, I think you have a chance of fitting into any system. I know you guys haven't changed a whole lot of what your game plan is and what you want to do offensively, but when you face a team like this with that kind of explosiveness, I know you've seen it before. <coughs> does that put pressure on your offense to have to try to keep up, or? Well, I'm. I'm under the old North Carolina basketball philosophy right now, We're playing four quarters. <laughs> you know, so I know some of you youngsters don't have any clue what I'm talking about, but that um, really that that's the type of game that gives us the best chance of winning. I mean, obviously, the strength of our offense is ball control and running the football. You know, obviously, when it's scoring 17 points, isn't going to get it done. You know, you know, we're gonna have to do better than that. But I think that the less their offense is on the field, the better. To kind of follow up on that, you look at their five losses this year, all of them except one, 49 points or more. I mean, do you, does that put more pressure on the offense to try to open things up? I know you're always kind of tinkering and doing some different things, but do you have to kind of put in extra time this week, or? Well, I, I, always, I do that anyway. You know, I do try to do that, but at the same time, at the end of the day. You have to do what you do, you know. And you know, I'm not going to all of a sudden come out and begin no huddle and try and try to throw it on every down. You know, I think that you know, I think that you have, you have to do what you do, and hopefully, hopefully, Josh, you do it a lot better. That would give you the best chance. Just do it a lot better. That means, you know, instead of just moving the ball, and getting a few first downs, or getting the ball into at red zone and have to settle for a field goal try. I mean, you got to turn those plays into touchdown because oh, it could be one play like it was the other day. First play of a drive, right after momentum had gone to Iowa State, first play of a drive, throw a little ball in the flat to number one, he takes it up the sideline for a touchdown, 
you just went on a six minute drive and you're marching in and you're feeling really good about himself five seconds later you're back out there because the guy just took the guy just took it you know 70 yards for a touchdown so I mean I think you just have to a lot of a lot of patience and not try to do try to do something that you're not physically capable of doing. Do you expect to use Dane last time we talked to you? Dane will play. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll just have to see how it how it plays out right there. But you know, I think that I think we felt pretty good. You know, look at we don't have a, a complete guy right now. <coughs> I think but between the two of them, I thought that the, the uh, between the two of them, I thought we got pretty good production out of the quarterback position. The game didn't turn out that way that way. But I think that they we had good production out of both of them. And you know, as we're evolving until we get that that person that we feel is you know, is, is more complete. I think that that gives us the best chance of competing to win. Every week you're facing a, a team with a, more speed than you have, a lot more speed. And you have a guy on offense who doesn't get many carries and is a big, fast guy who, in my head, I would think would be good on defense. It, it, Brandon Bourbon, is, is that a thought ever if, 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 if Brandon Bourbon were good on defense, he'd be playing defense. Okay, so when, when I love when I love when people say, "God, he looks like he'd be a great <laughs> linebacker." Okay, well, come to practice and you get answers to some of those questions. Okay, but those are the type of things you don't do during the season. Those are the type of things you, you if you're going to give it a give it a shot, you do it in the springtime when you can do it full time. I don't think you can. I don't think that in a week or two you can. Trans, transfer a player from one side of the ball to the other, but you can if you see a guy buried in the depth chart where there's no end in sight. And remember, the kid's only a sophomore. I mean, the kid you know, he's got a lot of time left here, okay. But you know, and the kid's a natural runner, and he's playing in a position where there's a lot of good players, okay. But uh, if you're buried in the depth chart and it's the springtime and you want to take a look, that's the time to do that. But. You know, based off the evidence I see, I think he's playing the position and he's, he's best suited for him. Does a guy have to want to play defense to be a good defense? Well, there's there's hitting and then avoiding hitting. <laughs> so offensive guys are trying not to get hit. Defensive guys are trying to hit. So when you're spending your whole life trying not to get hit and then have to go start hitting, it's not usually a very good match in case, you, in case you're wondering. They usually don't fit that well together. As a, as a guy that's uh, hosted bowl games before, how much do you gain from those extra months of practice? How much I mean, were you guys able to do stuff this year to, to try to make up for the, 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 the development that you get from those 15 days is huge. But the, that's probably the greatest thing that happens, the development. Being able to take a, you know, a, you know, Courtney Arnick, you know, who really, Tyler Holmes, guys that have really played great on the special, on the show team all year. Tavin Shaw, Greg Allen, you know, I'm just, there's, there's four, there's four freshmen just on the defensive side of the ball who really every day give a full day's work on the show team. And then all of a sudden now, you know, you're repping them with our stuff. You know, to get them that much closer, to get ready to go, rather than them just reading off the of cards and playing on show team. I think the development you get is, is probably by far your greatest benefit. And you know, when you're not playing in one, conversely, you know that's one thing you miss. Now, the flip side of that is, you know, it gives you an opportunity to spend every waiting second on recruiting. So I mean, there's right now recruiting is really important to us. You know, so about five seconds after this game's over, our staff will be scattering, you know, to, you know, go into the next phase. And the next phase is having seven people on the road every day that you can have them on the road until you have to come off the road that Saturday, the 15th or 16th, whenever that is, that night. You know, a bunch of weary puppies coming off the road because they're going to be out there for two weeks. But the development, uh, getting back to your question one more time, and the development is is probably the thing that you'll miss the most, that you gain the most uh, when you get to go through those 15 extra practices. Sort of <clears throat> along those same lines, obviously you got a group of seniors and, and this team that has a lot to play for on Saturday with you know goals and, and finishing 
with a win and all that stuff. But is there anything, is there any such thing as momentum that you can take out of this game that does carry into 2013? You mean like if you won? Well, sure. If you win the game, the, 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 just the psychological lift, okay, would be more than, more than anything else, the psycholo psychological lift. You know, sometimes you guys, you guys play with that weight on your, the burden, the weight on your shoulders that would be lifted. And then, okay, let's go, let's move on, let's go. You know, because there's still things that have been left unanswered that until you answer them, you know, there are going to be question marks, sure. psychologically. You know, I think that, uh, I think that the framework will all, already be, will be different, will already be more positive. But still, until they do it, it's all been done. Yeah. As far as recruiting goes, does that have an effect too? When you can say, "Hey, we finished strong." I mean, does that? I mean, can you use that, or does that even play? Well, first of all, it all depends on your thought methodology. Okay. Now, there's two different types of, re of recruiting mentalities. One is more of the salesman. You know, I'm trying to sell campus. You know, we try to represent who we are what our school's all about, and where we are right now with our program. So you're a guy who wants to come in and you see yourself as a really good player, but you want to play right now. That, that when, when, if you think, that, if that's the way you're thinking, I think I have an advantage over a lot of other schools. So you see it as a disadvantage, I do see it just the opposite. I see it as an advantage. You say, so, okay, so it's them and us, right? So it's down to those two. You feel comfortable about those schools. Now, when do you want to play? You know, do you want to play three years from now? Or do you, you want to compete next year? And I think in a lot of places, they sit there and visibly watch games, and they see the positions they play. They think that they can come and get into the mix early. That's one of the reasons why they say yes. Do you think that's changed? I mean, the idea that, the, not that exactly, but the idea that a 1 in 11 program or a 1 in 10 or whatever can, can get those guys because maybe the record doesn't mean as much to recruits as, as what you just The best said. year I ever had recruiting in the past was after the worst season because more guys see an opportunity to play earlier. They all want to play. Yeah. Uh, they all want to play. Coach, you mentioned if you're able to. To win on Saturday would be lifting up a burden. With, with the idea of, you know, the guys carrying around the burden of what's so far one win season. Have you started thinking about how you're going to, how you address the team after the season's over and help them deal with it and not carry a burden like this? And can they see it as a developmental year? Or is it too disappointing? Or I'm, ready, I'm ready to go. Well, regardless of what happens on Saturday, I have both, I have both plans of attack already ready for Sunday. It will not go past Sunday. It will be addressed on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Not one second later than that. Right before I have to go see that, that guy to do the TV show. You know, and then I'm flying out of town. But I'm saying it, uh, and I've already thought through both sides of that right there, because you have to, you know, the high and the low, you have to go through both of them right there and what your thought methodology would be. I mean, I just had a, a bunch of days off, too. I mean, I, you know, I have a lot of notepads. My writing is horrible, but I mean, I have a lot of notepads to kind of put my thoughts down on, you know, what the answers to the test are. So, at least how I'm going to approach it. So, I'm ready to go. Charlie, going along with that, what do you anticipate your mindset will be after that game? And will you be ready to go into an off season, or would you like to <coughs> play another season? Bang, bang, bang. I can't, I can't recruit fast enough. If I could be recruiting that Saturday night, I'd do it then. I'm not kidding when I say that. I can't get out there fast enough. See, I'm a little weird as a head coach now. Most of those head coaches don't like, don't like this recruiting stuff. You know, I don't like being away from home and you know, all that other stuff, but I do. You know, I think that recruiting is a lifeline. That's what I think. I think that that's what the one thing that they should expect from me. That I believe that I'm going to have that I'm going to have to just be a grinder, and that's what I intend to do. I'm not asking you to necessarily reflect 
two months, but but how fast has this whole thing gone? I mean, from when you were in this room introduced as that coach to now your first season's over. I mean, did those fly by? It went fast. Uh, went fast until after the South Dakota State game. It's going pretty <laughs> slow. <laughs> 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 uh, fair answer? I'll take it. Okay, <laughs> fair answer. Do you think recruiting is going well? <clears throat> Very pleased. I'm very pleased with where we are. It's been more difficult in the past. I mean, do you have to? Then, I know you don't want to go too much talking about other stuff, but I mean, when you compared to what you've done in the past, I mean, is it more difficult at a place like Kansas that doesn't have that notoriety, that that, that you know that national perception of a football program? No, it's it's di- it's just different. It's not tougher. It's just different. You know, it's different. You know. Uh, and I'll give you like a lot, let me just talk about like a portion of it. I didn't recruit junior college players. Didn't do it. Now, now I'm recruiting junior college players. Now, uh, I said it before, so I'll say it again. Okay, you take a junior college player. Okay, they've already put two years, spent at least two years of their life at junior college. They don't want to go there either. But they went there because it was a means to an end. Now they're two years away from getting their degree from college. Okay, and, and every one of them, of course, aspiring to play on Sunday. It doesn't work out that way for everyone, as we know, but they all aspire to play on Sunday. Okay, so you want to go somewhere where you, and you think you have a chance of getting out there and playing. I mean, it's, it, this is an attractive place. What's not to like about this place? What's not to like about Kansas? What's not to like about the school? What's not to like about the facility? And if you want to play a team that's a team that's that's record is deficient, is one that you know opens your eyes, saying, "Look," and my comment to them, be I'm brutally honest with you, I'll say to them, "Have you watched this play? You think you can play here? Because if you think you, you can't play here, then you probably shouldn't be playing." It's a very simple, you know, it's no BS involved there. That is a very practical way to approach these guys. And you want to know something? They're interested. They're interested for that reason alone. There's no sale here. That's just, I mean, everything else is in play. I mean, from the chancellor to the AD to the administration to the academic support, okay, to where they live, to where they eat, you know, to everything. Everything's in place. Lawrence is a heck of a, a, heck of a college town. Put those places, things all together. What's missing? What's missing is we're not winning enough games, so come and help change that. Really not that tough to, to figure out if you think about it. And there'll be plenty of people say no. And those people, all, you know, the number one reason they say no is because there's a stigma that's attached when the team's losing. So our job is to remove that stigma. That's what we have to do. I don't know if this is the right word, but when you get a kid to commit early and then you go through a rough year, um, do you have to play defense at all to, to stop other schools from you, you, you lose a few, you don't lose many. Because at, at the end of the day, most of these guys have already kind of bought into what you're all about. You lose a few, you don't lose many. You know, that, and that's the way, and you want to know something? It comes with the territory. You just got to accept it as part of doing business. That's just what's going to end up happening. And it's going to end up happening every year. Rather than getting mad at the other schools you know, and get mad at the kid, just life moves on and you'll get somebody else. I mean, that's what you do. You got to take a very practical approach here. But I know one thing. We've got 27 spots, and there's a good chance to be 27 people to fill those spots that we like. There's a good, there's a good chance of it. Might be 26, but it's it, it's going to be it's going to be right there. I know the psychology of it all is, is big for you and something you pride yourself on. You gave us the Dion Ranch, David Gibbons example in the summer. I remember. Yeah, is there something is there something there versus recruiting a junior college kid and, and a high school kid the way you talk to them and treat them? They're not the same. Yeah, that's right. You don't talk to them the same. You know, it's the same school you're representing, but right. the thought methodology is different. You know, like the first thing they want to talk about is, are, they, are you going to redshirt them? 
And I tell every, every high school kid, don't come in with the intent that you're richer. Come in trying to beat everyone out. And then if it ends up working out that it's in your best interest and our best interest for you to redshirt, then we'll redshirt. But don't come in with that thought. Come in thinking you're going to be the best player there possibly is and just try to go beat everyone out. And if you are, you'll play. So I don't know what the numbers are this year, but probably what a third of the guys played and two thirds of them didn't play. And some of those guys who played, we didn't count on playing. I mean, Trey Parmley, I before we thought for sure wasn't going to play. We had about 120, you know, I'm being sarcastic, but I mean, you know, I didn't count on him playing, but he deserved to play. That's why he played. You know, and you want to know something, even though he doesn't have a lot of production, it will help him down, it will help him next year going forward, because we won't have to worry about the butterflies, him going through it again when he's going to play next year. It may be an individual thing, but are, are, are the Juco kids typically more you know, mature, more I mean, grown men versus young boys? Well, they've already gone through a lot of trials and tribulations that, you know, first of all, they didn't pick, they didn't pick the junior college because that's where they grew up wanting to go. Okay. You know, that's where they ended up. They didn't always, they didn't always I really want to go to this junior college when I, when I graduated. Okay, so now they're there. Okay, so they've already invested, and they're not 18 years old anymore. And, you know, it's, the, it's usually not utopia in those places they're, they're going to. So now they come in, and all of a sudden you say, okay. You know, almost everyone that comes on a visit here loves the place. I can tell you, for, for, every, for every kid that comes here on a, an official visit, very few walk out of here not liking the place. You guys talk to them. A lot of you guys talk to them. I mean, I can't remember anyone ever saying, I hated the place. You know, and that's usually not the way we come across, not the way the school represents. I mean, there's a lot of, there's, there's way more positives than negatives. The biggest negative, as we implied before, okay, is when you're dealing with a, with a one in 10 team, you know, that's, that's what you have to deal with. But you can take that and you can flip that and use that as a, as a, a look, look, here's where we are. You want to play? Let's go. Coach, could you um, comment on um, what James Sims has done responding to his suspension and what you've seen from him? And you mentioned you're talking about guys with aspirations to play on Sundays. What's out there for him? You know, how good can he be next year? And what do you need to see from him in the offseason to make those dreams come true for him? I hate to, you know, I don't want to compare James to anyone in particular. You know because you don't know how things are going to play out down the road. But, you know, I remember, I remember everyone telling Terrell Davis he was no good. You know, I remember, I remember that, yeah, you're not fast enough, you know, yeah, you're a tough guy, you can run inside, can't really run outside, and all he went, went to the Broncos and rushed for about 8,000 yards, or 10,000 yards, and, I mean, he was just awesome. And I remember, talking to him down at the University of Georgia when he was coming out. And, you know, he was in the tank and everything. I said, look, you're going to get drafted late in the draft, and you're going to have an opportunity for something good to happen. And sure enough, man, did he make me look silly because he was better than good. Now, last spring, after the spring was over, I sat here with all you guys, and no disrespect to the ladies here, I include, I include you in the guys, okay? All you guys is a figure of speech in New Jersey. But I, I sat here and I said, well, yeah, I don't know what everyone else is talking about, but this kid is really good. He can run inside, he can run outside. I mean, he can pick up the blitz, he can run, he can catch. I don't know what he can do. I said, does he run sub four or five? No. But he's a really, really good player. And if you're a really, really good player here, there's a better than even chance that you're going to have a chance to be a really good player there. You know, I think that James Sims, his football will not end. And his football will not end next year when, you know, he finishes up his senior year. He'll, uh, his football year will co will continue. Charlie, what was your uh, gauge on the team's move coming back from Thanksgiving? Did you sense that they're ready for an off season, or are they still fired up about the chance? I don't think the off season's even in their mind yet. I mean, do you think they're looking forward to spending extra time with Osop? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I mean, you don't know Hosop very well. That's that's not they're not there yet. They're happy we're still playing. 
it's, it, maybe it's the lesser of two evils, but uh, no, I think that they're, they're really looking forward to one more shot, having one, having one more shot, because this happens quick now. I mean, because we play that game, then it's the last week, and the last week of school is the next week, Friday's study day, exams are the next, the following Monday. I mean, this all goes down in two, you know, after that game is only, you know, less than two weeks from then, they'll, they'll be home for Christmas. You know, everything happens in a hurry. Other than a win, what do you want to see this weekend out of your team? Well, why does it have to be other than a win? Well, I figured you definitely wanted that. Oh, thank you. What, what do you want to see as part of the win? I want, uh, I was very disappointed with how the game went against, how the game went against Iowa State. You know, if, if, we, if we play, if we play a game, look, if we don't show up against these guys, it'll be 100 to nothing. I mean, because, the, you know, they're not going to take the pedal off the pedal now. I mean, that, 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 that foot's going to be put, pestle, pushed all the way to the floor now. So if you don't show up, it could be a long, hard day. You know, but, you know, just like I want, I've wanted from day one, I want to go out there and I want to slug it out for 60 minutes and let the chips fall with it. So now that you've been in the, in the Big 12 for a year, what are your, what are your impressions of this conference? And are you surprised by all the offense? Well, I, I knew of the numbers, but the... The offenses, I believe, are very dynamic. I mean, you want to talk about a contrast in styles to go from the SEC to the Big 12 in one year. You want, you want from all the games being slugged out games in the teens to games being 50 to 49. You know, I mean, you, know, when you want to talk about two different styles. They're two different, they're total, two totally different styles. But, you know, I think that these teams, you know, these teams would give anyone a problem, you know, as far as scoring points. I mean, I haven't liked it as the head coach, but I'm sure the defensive coaches like it even less. But, and there's a lot of good players. What have you seen out of Kilpick this year? I mean, I know he's gone through some coaching changes and the position change, like in the past. Uh, consistency. Same guy. Every day, you know, he comes to work every day. You know, the the, the coaching phrase he'd be t he'd be uh, no disrespect intended. He'd be labeled a blue collar a blue collar player. Just bring your lunch pail every day and go to work. Same guy every day. And what more can you ask from a player than to to come and work your butt off every single day and prepare every single day like it's the last game of your career. I'd say as much as anyone on this team, I'd say he would be right at the top of that list. I have a lot of, I have a lot of respect for Kelvin. Your last road trip had a smaller number on it. And you guys, you took same story. This, this will not be a big number either. <laughs> okay. Can a program be making progress, although it may not look like it to outsiders and a win loss record? Yeah, there's a bunch. I mean, I could, you know, the thing, John, is I can give you, oh, probably close to 20 things that I'm happy about. There's that many that I'm happy about. Okay, but the glaring thing that stands when you're a football coach, forget about the football team for a second. You know, I'm the guy who's in charge of the program, and we're one in 10. And part of your job, all those other things, both both on and off the field, are all in very, very important ingredients to getting things right. And there's been plenty of them. Look at, I mean, tell me a team in the league that runs the ball better than us. I don't know if there is one. Now, at the beginning of the year, I couldn't have said that. Could you have said that? I mean, I couldn't have said it either. So now all of a sudden you, you, you have this rushing attack, you get the same runners back next year, you fix your passing game. You know, you can see from my standpoint, you know, I'm drooling, you know, to get to the offseason. You know, I can't get there fast enough because all of a sudden when you're, you're not a one-dimensional team, you become a two-dimensional team, you know, things change in a hurry. Okay, but the bottom line is you can't, like, 
There's been games where, you know, where, you know we've talked about, let's just open it up and just sling it in that and I said, why? I mean, you have to you have to lay building blocks to go ahead and fix the problems. What problem does that fix? Okay, you have to fix the problems, and I think we've fixed a lot of problems. But I think until you start winning football games, winning more football games, okay, even the biggest fan is going to have to be a bit skeptical, and understandably so. Okay, but you know that's that's our intent. You know, you know, I I love when people will say, well, why did you take this job? I didn't take the job to go one and ten. I didn't take it for that reason. I, took it because I felt that this would be a challenge taking this team and turning it from a from a program at the bottom to back to not only respectability but being a perennial winning football team. And that's what I intend to do before I leave.